In Creo Parametric, you can use inheritance when placing a form in a sheet metal model in order to control its size. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in a sheet metal part. It's just got a couple of walls in here. Let's put in our form. If you go to the form drop down, you have a variety of different methods that you can use. I'm going to use a punch form to grab one from my library. And when I go to the punch form interface from the drop down list, I have a bunch that I can select because I have options set up that point to my different libraries. If I go to the icon to the right of the drop down list, it opens up a dialog box that allows me to select my punch form library with the same choices. Also, I could navigate in my different folders in order to locate the files that I want. All right, for the form that I'm going to use, let's use a flat louver. This is an inch model, so I will select that. Let me show my placement tab. So for locating this in the model, let's locate this thing on the back surface. We can see a preview of the geometry already. Let me hold down the right mouse button to activate my offset references collector. Alternatively, you can drag these handles to the different references that you want to use. I always prefer to use surfaces. And we've got our different dimensions in here. Let's add a rotation about the first axis and let's rotate this and punch in a value of 90 degrees to be exact. And let's see for the distance. Let's use a value of 1.5 and 1.5. Oops. Let's hit the undo button accidentally clicked on a surface when I was trying to grab the dimension. Okay, so that is good for the placement of it in the model. Let me hit the check mark in order to locate it and say, yeah, okay, that's that's okay. Let's select the form and then hold down the right mouse button and I can pattern it and I can say, let's put in a direction pattern. And oddly enough, I always use edges a lot when I'm doing a direction pattern. All right, let's punch in the spacing and try putting five of them in here and hit the check mark. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's not bad, except the louver is a little too big. I wish it was a different size. If I expand the pattern in the model tree, I can select the lead feature and then edit definition. On the dashboard for creating the feature is a button that allows you to copy the form model using independent inheritance. So when I click on the icon, well, nothing visible happens on the computer screen. If I go to the shape tab, here we have a button, vary the punch model. So when I click on that, it opens up a varied items dialog box. It shows the shape of the form in the accessory window. I like to make this a lot bigger so I can see exactly what I am working on. And our varied items dialog box has seven different tabs, but of the different options in here, the one that you're probably going to want to use really is dimensions. You also have parameters and features and a bunch of other different options for your 3D annotations, but I want to change the size of this. And also the model tree gets split. So you have a second model tree with the features in the original form that was used to create the model. So I'm going to select the first extrude, probably an easy way to get to the dimensions. And I can see that I've got a dimension here for the width and I'll click on it. And let's see anything else that I want to change about this. Yeah, maybe I want this to be a little bit shorter, so I will select that dimension as well and select this dimension. The angle dimension's fine. I'm probably not going to change anything else. And so I can say instead of this being an inch and a half wide, let's make it one inch wide. And instead of it being 0.28 tall, let's change it to a value of 0.2. And let's make that D2 dimension this dimension here, let's make that 0.25. Then I can click the OK button and it adjusts the size of it. 
I can say, hey, now that it's smaller, I can adjust these dimensions as well. Change that to a value of 1. Change this one to a value of 1 as well. Hit the check mark. And then I can go to my pattern and edit definition and change these dimensions as well. Maybe change this to a 1.5. Increase the number of instances. That last one might be a little too close to the edge. And we can add in a reference for the second direction. And let's grab it and drag it to the other way. Maybe I'm going to use a value here of 1.5. And get three of those. Let's see how that looks. Hit the check mark. Hey, there I have all of my different louvers in the model. Looks like a few of them had issues. Let's edit the definition of the pattern. Yeah, it looks like that last one on the end. Didn't like those. There we go. Yeah, it's running into the interfering geometry, probably from the flange wall over there. So that is how you can use inheritance when you are using forms in a model. And in this particular situation, I invoked inheritance when I was placing, or excuse me, editing definition of the feature in the model. You can do it right when you're placing it. So let me go to my punch form. Let me choose to use the this one instead. And for the placement surface, let me query select to the back surface. For my offset references, maybe I want to dimension it from this surface. And this surface. And before I adjust the different dimensions in here, I can go to the inheritance and go to the shape tab, hit the very punch model. And usually it's one of the very first dimensions that has the values that you want to change. So for example, let's change this one and this one. And you can see if maybe some of the other different features have dimensions that you want to alter. And I can say, hey, yeah, I want to change this one as well. And so let's make this a length of 1.2 and change the 0.28 value for the height. Oh, maybe I just want it a little bit shorter, but I do want it to be longer. So let me try changing that point. Hold on, didn't actually punch in a number. Let's change this to 0.2. Hit the OK button and hit the check mark. And there we have the altered louver placed in the model. And again, the second one I did by varying the dimensions when I was placing it, as opposed to placing it and editing definition. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.